Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have Bernadette Thompson, and she is an amazing woman. She is a certified genealogist. She works with people that have trauma and also people that are going through end-of-life grief. And she has she does a lot more than that. There is a lot to uh, to tell about um, Bernadette, and she's gonna you know because she she is so connected to the mind, body, and spirit, and she does so much for so many people. I'm gonna let Bernadette tell you a little about herself and what she does, and it's gonna be very interested. So open your ears and listen carefully because you're gonna be really 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 interested in what she has to say. So Bernadette, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Hi, Stacey. Um, well, I am the, well, first of all, I'm so excited and happy to be here with you and your listeners. And um, I'm the owner of Tell Me Our Story, Genealogy and the Ancestral Healing. So my background is that um, I am a genealogist, have been a genealogist for um, over 15, getting close to 20 years that I've been doing genealogy. But I have also been trained um, where I've worked with students and children that have had trauma um, and also uh, have um, so I've done a lot of work and a lot of training with them for 13 years in, in a middle school with uh, sixth, seventh and eighth graders. So um, and I am also a someone that has um, worked in with the senior uh, side of, um, you know, the elder care management side. And so I am actually a certified end of life doula. And so I help people, I understand that the grief, what grief and trauma looks like in, in, um, in someone when they are experiencing it. And as I began my career, as I said, as a genealogist over 15 years ago, but bringing it all together, it was actually gone through the, the trauma and grief of losing my husband myself, that I began to realize the deep connection that we have with our ancestors. And so this this my background kind of all came together. I, you know, I've been uh, researching and understanding uh, how to find the stories and the documents that tell us our family story. And then also realizing that as we begin to do that, that the connection, the deep connection that we have with them brings us a tremendous amount of healing. And I would bring, you know, as I worked with people and, and was helping them go through their family story and what they were uncovering, I could see the healing beginning. And I understood that this was more than just um, knowing the names of the of the family members on your tree and being able to to know whether you went back to the Mayflower or that your ancestors came from Spain or you know just um, but also to truly start to begin to know that our ancestors are our family and that we are a descendant from them and that they. You know, when they came, when they, the lives that they led, they had us in mind. You know, they were living lives, hoping to better for the, for the next generation and the next generation. Right. And we know now that as they were going through their lives, that they did experience trauma. And science tells us that those trauma experiences um, cause responses in our bodies like anxiety um, or just difficulty with relationships. And those things get passed down to us. And so I began to help people understand as they learned what their ancestors had gone through, they began to see how that was part of who they were today. And that was what helped them to begin the healing process. Wow. Yeah, that's really amazing. I've always been interested in genealogy. And when you you really get in touch with the, the spiritual world, and has that always been a gift for you since you were younger? Or is it something that evolved later on in life? You, that is a that's an awesome question. If you had asked me that, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, I might have said, 
maybe a little bit, but I now look back and see the progression that I, you know, I always had this curiosity. It sometimes shows up as just an interest in history and you're interested in family. Um, But as you, as I look back, I was seeking and seeking not only um, ancestral, you know, looking for my ancestors, but I was speaking, I was seeking spiritually as well. And they are often very connected. So it is, I, you know, I would, as your listeners are sitting here, I'm sure some of them are looking back saying, I've done that too. I didn't (laughs) know that that's really what I was doing. Right, right. And you said that when you connect with, 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 with the spiritual world, there, there are lots of different ways that you can connect. And then some people don't even realize, but they're getting connections from the spiritual world, from their ancestries or people close to them that were here that passed, and they may not even know it. Um, Absolutely. There is, you know, if I use my personal story just to help people understand One, I had a deep connection about wanting to know about my ancestors. So that was a way of just opening, beginning the opening. But it was as I went through the trauma of uh, my husband passed away from alcoholism. Mm -hmm. So it was a difficult um, passing for him and for our family. And as um, I was understanding the emotions of going through that, I began to realize how deeply connected I was with my ancestors and they, uh, I was, I shared a little bit about this with you before, but as um, when you open up, when you begin to understand and know the ancestors, they start to come to you. You begin to feel um, a connection and know them. um, You know them as individuals. You you understand their lives. We have so many. And each one of them has lived lived a different life. And we often get connected to um, a few of them that are personally really looking out for us. And they're, I would say, my it would be our spiritual guides that are, are close by us. But when I was struggling with the um, with the challenges of someone who was uh, you know, struggling with an addiction, yeah. my ancestors came in and surrounded me. And I was sharing earlier that I was, uh, I grew up Catholic um, and I uh, had learned to say the rosary, but hadn't, hadn't, don't, I'm not a, going to church a lot right now and hadn't been, up. Mm-hmm. but I started, I had heard someone talk about uh, using actually it was John Edward, the, the medium saying how he used the rosary as a, a way of meditation. So as I was struggling and going through what I was going through, I started to use that. And I imagined my ancestors around me, um, helping me go through this challenging period of time. And I had this one experience, there's a spiritual experience and it's called the visitation. It feels like a dream when you are, it happens when you are asleep and you think you, you, some people will wake up and say, oh, I just had a dream about my grandfather or my, you know, somebody that had passed away. Yeah. But, and sometimes that's true, but in many cases, it's a visitation and the visitation is when they come and they really are connecting one-to-one with you in that Um, in that dream. And so my great aunt, who happened to be a nun, Sister Lou, she was amazing, a lot of fun. She came to me in this dream. And she, um, I was she held my hands, we were in a room together, it was had a golden hue to it. And Mm -hmm. she was holding, I'm looking all around, and she's holding on to my hands. And she makes me look her straight in the eye. And she says, we hear your prayers. And And then I woke up and I knew from that moment that I was not alone on this journey, that I was, that they were with me and they were surrounding me, helping me through this very challenging time that I was going through. And I share that because I want your listeners to know that when they, when they discover that their ancestors are with them, they are surrounded all the time, even now. Um, even if they don't know who they are, their ancestors are close, um, close by them. And so we, 
so I had that connection. And a little while later, I had, as continuing on this rosary theme, I, I'm all Irish. My maiden name is O'Brien. Um, all roads lead to Ireland. <laughs> and um, when I, I remember this time, there was, uh, it was really, really challenging. I was very concerned about my husband and how he wasn't doing well. Yeah. And I was saying the rosary in the evening. And all of a sudden, um, I, the rosary started coming through me in, in an Irish brogue. And I knew that one of my ancestors, one of my great grandmothers was coming through and speaking the rosary, telling me that she was here with me or they were all here yeah. every time I said the rosary. So it is this connection with them that um, one lets us know that ancestrally that they are here. Yeah. And as you begin to look into, as I discover stories and um, the documents that our ancestors have left us as yeah. kind of a path yeah. to help find it, it's like the breadcrumbs in, in, um, or in Hansel and Gretel that, you know, they're, they're there for us yeah. to look back and see um, where, you know, what their path was they draw in closer um, and it really helps us to um, understand and know that we are part of something that's greater than us yeah. and it helps us feel connected spiritually to the other side even if that's something that we aren't quite sure we believe in right. or that we want to believe in but we may be feeling like you know I feel like I need something concrete um, so as we look at our ancestors and you begin to feel what I call as spirit chills, yeah, where you, you kind of feel that feeling like somebody has just put their, you know, fingers on you and yeah. it's, it's a very light, beautiful touch that makes you understand that there is spirit close by and loving you and supporting you, um, and helping you in whatever it's going through. So uh, on that side, when you do genealogy and you start to see your, your ancestry, um, how do you know which ones might be close to you? Is there a certain feeling you get? Like you just talked about being touched, like you feel like they're touching you. Is there, you know, for people, mm -hmm. how, how do they feel that? That, that it is so it's so it's so fascinating often when I do a family tree for somebody because or if I'm working if someone has done it and I'm just looking at it and helping spirit will help me understand they will give me a connection so as we when you start to look at your ancestors you know you start out with you know your parents your grandparents your great-grandparents it grows mm -hmm. very quickly yeah so as we kind of go through each each um, limb of your tree, you will start to feel a connection. Either you feel the connection because it was an important part of your life growing up, or you suddenly feel a connection because, I'll give you an example. Um, I was working with somebody and their great grandfather had been a doctor, a field doctor in the Civil War. And they were in the medical field and no one else in their family had been in the medical field. And when I discovered that for them, all of a sudden they realized that that's where this, this was coming from, from that, for right. them. And so sometimes it is that type of a connection, connecting with an ancestor that they didn't understand that they had yeah. um, a connection with them. And sometimes it is the connection that a strong connection that has always been there. And that ancestor who they may remember or they may not, they um, is there telling them, we're here, I'm watching you, I'm helping you. I, I'm, I'm understanding what you're going through. And I, I want you to know that you're going to be okay. Right. So that's where um, a lot of it, that's where the connection, a lot of the connection comes from. It's funny you say that because I, I had spoken to someone who was a spiritualist and they had told me that my grandmother um, was watching over me and that she watches over me a lot. And she had passed when my father was 18. So I have never met her, don't know her, but I was told that she's always with me. And I found that very interesting because I've never met her before, you know, but 
supposedly she is always around me and she's always watching over me. So, yeah. and, and, you know, interestingly about that, that's when, you know, sometimes I look back for that ancestor yeah, and see what was the life? What did she grow up? How did she grow up? What was going on in her life? Yeah. And, and maybe, you know, what, what kind of challenges did she have? And, and sometimes even in that you say, oh, this is why she's so close to me or there, or she had a special connection with your parent or your, and so there, yeah. you see why they, um, they are especially connected with you. Right. And it is so incredibly helpful um, to know and ways that you connect to, you know, I was just thinking about this. Um, when my husband passed away, uh, you know, the ancestors definitely came in to help me understand. Yeah. And one of the ways that they came through uh, it was music. Like I would hear songs. Sometimes it would be song that I might hear on the radio. And that's a yeah. common thing people will say when you hear that. That definitely can be a sign from somebody. But also the sign can be a song that comes into your head. Yeah. That and and you sometimes are aren't sure why. So I had this great uncle. His name was Uncle Bob. And um I started getting this. Uh, Billy Joel's um, The Piano Man yeah. kept coming into my head. And because I the work I do, I knew it was somebody trying to connect with me. Right. And I couldn't figure out who it was. And suddenly I realized this was my great uncle Bob who played the piano. Right. And he we always would go to his house and he played by ear. He never read music and he had a little bit of a professional career, but he would always play the polka. And we were little, we would dance the polka around his um, living room. Yeah. And that was his sign to me that he was with me. He was the piano man. And even today, sometimes I will get um, the piano man coming through, but I know that it is him. Right. That, um, that's coming through. And, and my husband, comes through uh, in song and you know in I'll have songs coming through or numbers is a way yeah. of um, knowing I can tell you another little story about yeah. when he passed um, I was uh, I was taking a, a I had a client in the car with me had to go on a long drive and put some music on so that we could uh, have something. And in my head, I was a playlist of mine. And in my head, I was saying, um, oh, play some of our songs, trying to talk yeah. to them, you know, in heaven. Right. And, um, and you know, the whole thing rides going on and other songs are playing. And I'm like, really, you're not playing, you know. And then a song came on, but it was a song that I was like, that song, I don't really like that song, you know, yeah. but I still had it on my playlist. And then at the end of the, you know, I got the client to where they were supposed to be. And now I'm headed home and I'm thinking about the grocery store. And I was stopped at a stoplight. And all of a sudden, one of the songs that was incredibly special to us yeah. came on the radio. And now, you know, on my, on my playlist. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it was Landslide, Stevie Nicks's Landslide. And, it, you know, so it was, I just had this feeling. But another sign for him was is also, he passed on 11-1-17. So 1-1-1-7 is a sign. Yeah. So when I was stopped at that stoplight, that song came on and the license plate in front of me was 1117. Oh, wow. So our spirit, our, those who have passed, whether they're ancestors or whether they're, they're a special um, close someone that has passed away, whether it's a, a relative or a friend, you know, or your, you know, your spouse or whomever, even yeah. the child that they will, they will come through um, and bring you something so that, you know, they're always with you right. so that, and you know that they're okay. Yeah. That's amazing. I know a lot of people are into the numbers and they like 11, 11, or they have five, 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 or they think four, four, four. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's your beliefs on, on the numbers and, and 
Hmm. My belief numbers are definitely um, a way that they want to communicate. Spirit wants to communicate with us in any way that they can. And so it is numbers. A lot of people talk about butterflies and cardinals, but there are many ways that you can um, connect with them. My mom happens to be a yellow wrangler. Mm -hmm. She, it's a long story, but a yellow wrangler was associated with her. And when I see it, and even my, even my children, I remember when my son was, uh, came off uh, the lacrosse field, had just scored the winning goal, goal in an overtime, you know, a semifinal game. Yeah. And the first thing he said to me, did you see the yellow wrangler in the parking lot? Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they, they show up, you can, so signs can be numbers, they can be things like um, a, you know, as a butterfly, or as any type of um, you know, bird or a crow, or, you know, a cardinal, but yeah. they can also be something that just reminds you of them. Right. So I want people to know that signs do not have to be um, something so specific that you discount everything else that shows up in front of you. Right. So if you see suddenly their favorite song or their favorite TV show or something comes up and, and you think of them, yeah. but it's not a sign, you feel like I haven't, I've never had a sign from them. You, those are signs. When right. you get that feeling that of seeing them and missing them, you are bringing them in. And whether they were, whether they were the ones that were coming around trying to to bother you, so you yeah. can know that they were there, or whether that just brought them in. Yeah, they are, they are with you. Um, and I just encourage you, anyone who is struggling or going through a difficult time um, to always call them in, that we are surrounded with help, with, um, we can look to our ancestors to see the, you know, we see the trauma that they went through. And I want to talk a little bit about the trauma where our ancestors did go through things. Uh, many went through war or famine. My ancestors mm -hmm. went through famine, the Irish famine. Mm -hmm. And they those struggles cause reactions, as I had said earlier, in our bodies. And those are passed, those are passed down to us. Mm -hmm. But we also see that, you know, the the triumphs that they made it through that story yeah. and they, they were resilient enough. And we are an example of their resiliency. We right. are here and we are living the lives that we are living because they came through. Yeah. When we look at it, at all of the things, war and trauma, you know, famine and the traumas that went on and all the things that could have prevent us yeah, from coming in in this embodiment to right. be who we are today, we're lucky, you know, yeah. that we made it. Yeah. Um, oh, so, sure. and I and I also wanted to share um, again about trauma that we when we go through a traumatic experience, and many of us we feel the trauma is passed down, and and that means that we may have overreactions to things, we may have increased anxiety. That's a, um, often one that people yeah. will talk about, the in, increased anxiety um, to a circumstance that doesn't need that much anxiety. Right. I, I try and use the example of, you know, anxiety or that, that fear was uh, given to us. So when we saw a bear in the woods, we knew we was, yeah. should be, you know, but that we sometimes have that reaction to a bear in the woods when it's something that doesn't call for that. Right. So, so that trauma, so we're experiencing that trauma. Yeah. But then on our own lives, what I went through going through the, the illness that my husband, his struggle with addiction and mm -hmm. how that affected us and the family right. was also, a, a, was trauma. Yeah. And um, and I just want them to understand that um, knowing that going through their ancestry, ancestral healing is it can heal the trauma that we have today. Yeah, we can, we can heal 
what we were passed down. Right. When we look back and understand that that wasn't ours. Yes. And that we don't have to hold on to that. Right. But we can also begin to heal our trauma. Exactly. You know, the trauma that we're, we've experienced. I feel it's it's so important, you know, to be able to connect and to be able to really dig deep into our inner self and to be able to connect with our inner self. Because a lot of times I feel like the spirit, the our spiritual world is trying to talk to us in many ways. And especially if we are able to connect with our inner selves, the answers are there. They're, they're, they're trying to guide us. They're trying to give us the answers. They're trying to lead us in the direction that will be more helpful to us. And it's, it's being able to really close off the outside world, our earth, and being able to really focus on the spiritual world and to focus on us and, and inside us and what, you know, what we need. Because, you know, the spiritual world talks to us, but we also our intuition, everything, it plays a whole role. And if we listen to what our, our, our cells need, the answers are always there. And is there any exercises or any ways that you suggest that you feel would be beneficial for people to start really connecting with themselves, with the spiritual world, and being able to understand what their body is telling them and the guidance that their body in, or in the spiritual world is giving them? Yes. When, when I began to open up more to the spiritual side, and it's interesting because while I've always had a spiritual side, uh, it was looking into the ancestors that began to break that open and bring it, um, and bring it to the forefront. Uh, the sitting quietly, understanding, you don't have to be in a deep meditation in order to uh, receive spiritual guidance. And I think sometimes people are um, anxious about that because yeah. we feel like I can't, you know, when I start to meditate, I think of what the, how am I going to pick the kids up and I have to go to the grocery store and what are we going to have for dinner yeah. or somebody's sick in the family and I've got to go check on grandma or, you know, all of those things come in and start to to worry us during that time yeah and i would say the best it, it meditating is good but meditating is good just to learn how to calm your body yeah so to try and do it and not worry that you are connecting with with the other realm or connecting just do it to um those deep breathing even you know start with five minutes of just calm breathing and if you need music just calm music play play calm music yeah. to be just begin to allow yourself to settle right and then the the side of talking with spirit is that you don't have to be in that meditative state yeah that often if you just allow yourself just talk to them mm -hmm. say i'm struggling and ask for somebody to show you the way. Ask them mm -hmm. for a sign that will bring you joy. So you know that if, if you're saying, I need to feel some joy. Or ask for a sign of something that will feel very grounding. Yeah. When, when we walk in nature, it's, it's a very grounding. You know, when sometimes when I walk in the woods, I'll feel the leaves on the trees. Mm -hmm just to know that um, there is spiritual energy all around us. Yes. And as we talked about earlier, that uh, we are energy and we are part of a bigger energy, mm -hmm. um, all leading back to source energy for yeah. um, where we're all a part of that. And when we don't have to... Um, it doesn't have to all happen at once. Right. I, I think that sometimes people want to feel connected and yeah. they want to um, be connected to spirit and they want that guidance and they feel like it doesn't work for me. Yeah. And, and my, and I would say whatever, if, for example, re-listening to a podcast like this or another podcast 
where it has them thinking about spirit and reminding them that uh, there is, um, that we do have the connection and that it is open to them. Yes. Because it's open to everyone. Mm Mm-hmm. It is. You know, I hear so many times people will come to me and they'll say, you know, I I haven't heard from my mother in a while. You know, I don't feel, you know, I I don't feel her presence around. I miss her, you know, and what would you say to someone like that? I, that, you know, I would say uh, there are a number of ways. One is sitting and just talking with her. Yeah. And just, and sometimes it's yelling at her <laughs> or it's <laughs> crying with her, yeah. you know, it, it, you know, it doesn't, they are still there. I always say that when my parents passed, I'm one of eight children that I had more attention from them when they passed than I had, I yeah. get their undivided attention. Right. So I would say that I would also say, you know, sometimes going through pictures, sometimes just looking back at um, your life, and, and that's where going back and looking at your ancestry can be, if you, if you have, if you know some things, if there's a special chair that was your, mo- your mom's special chair or your grandmother's special chair, go right. sit in it because their energy is all around you. Yeah. And I think the mistake is looking for that one sign that it can, it's only going to be the sign of the cardinal that's going to be outside right. or the butterfly or that special song. Like I haven't heard that special song in a while. Yeah. Um, so I would say is allow themselves to be open. And the other thing I was saying is you can call them in by saying, I need to give you a couple of signs because yeah. I don't see cardinals very much here right. or, you know, I, I just moved from, from Vermont in Vermont. There's not a lot of butterflies right. in the winter or so if butterflies are your sign, yeah. it, it's hard. So I encourage you to, um, to look for, or uh, ask them for other sides. I said that my, my mom was a yellow wrangler at one point with my dad, a lot of things, he was a Yankees fan. He was that, you know, there were a lot of New York connections that I knew that was him. Yeah. But with, um, but I didn't see that all the time. And so I finally said to him, I said, dad, I'm going to make you a red wrangler because I need to know that you are around me. And so I would see red wranglers the way I would see yellow wranglers. And I knew Um, So you can do that and help foster the connection. Um, Right. So, and I I think I would also want to share that we have our ancestors and we have our family and then above them, you know, is there are, there are spiritual beings that are around us as well. Mm-hmm. And, and that we sometimes connect with the spiritual beings who may not seem like ancestors. They can be angels. Yeah. They can be other types of spiritual beings. And I want you to know that they are there too, along with our, um, our ancestors and our family. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as I shared earlier, I often do try and bring people through by connecting with those that are closer to them to open them up so that they know that um, we are connected um, to the other side. That is a very thin veil, Yeah. And, but it's okay to take a little while to open to that right? and to understand it and to have the, the doubt. Yes. I'm not sure. And so uh, it's harder for me to believe because I need things that are a little more concrete. Right. Yeah. If you have angels and you have angel guides and you have others watching over us, do they give di- similar signs or do they give different types of signs or are they watching over and they help certain things come along or guide through our way, but they never say anything? Is it different between, between each of them, each of them? I would, I would say, yes, there, it's different um, in the way 
that you, you would like with my dad, you know, I was saying a Yankees. Thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So an angel wouldn't come through with that reference, but yeah. an angel may come through or a, a, um, a spiritual being may come through with this, with the number signs. Right. As I was growing, they were using a lot of number signs with me. So I, a lot yeah. of one, one, ones, three, three, threes. And, and um, some people will say, Oh, you have to see three of them. If you see two, and that, and you feel like it can be a two, like there are numerology does have a very specific. Yeah. And if you are very um, connected with numerology, then your signs are going to be very specific right. to numerology. So if you are studying a certain type of um, methodology, it, it your signs will be connected to that. Right. But if you're kind of a regular person that doesn't, hasn't yet chosen or, or just kind of is open to understanding, I want you to be open to different types of signs. Mm-hmm. And as you will eventually differentiate between what is family and what is a, is a higher mm-hmm. um, being, and you, we all have both. Right. So we all are guided by both. And, um, and as I said before, as when we experience a difficult time, that sometimes is what starts to break it open for us because we are feeling so in need of help and in right. need of guidance and to allow yourself to be open to right. that. There are, there are people who say that they, their spirit, their spiritual guide has a name they know what the name is. Um, for some, you know, they may not have the ability to connect in that sense. What's your intake on that? My intake, I have a spiritual guide that came to me. Um, they started, you know, and I, I wasn't really, wasn't thinking about talking about this side, but I, it started using a pendulum and I'm not a big fan of using that, but yeah. it was just some, you know, it was experimenting somebody um, and they chose that way to, to come to me. And eventually I came across a name that we kind of agreed on that that was their name. Mm-hmm. And it isn't necessarily, you know, they don't necessarily have a name Yeah, or if it's a name, it might be something that we didn't understand And it took quite a long time before I was able to really feel that I was connected. It, it grew, it, they didn't come in like, you know, one day they weren't here and the next day they were here. Yeah. So, so I would say, if you feel like there's somebody there, there most likely is somebody there Right. and you can begin to talk with them one way is to ask yes and no questions Mm -hmm. because it's easier to get a response. You can ask them, can you tell me what a yes sign would feel like? Maybe a yes sign is a spirit chill and a no sign is just none. Right. And so if you're asking something, they'll give you a spirit chill. And if you don't get that, um, but again, it is a, it is, I wanted to I want them to understand that it's a it's a process, mm-hmm. and it um, we are all um, as many beings, you know. Just even if we think of humans, the, the billions of humans on the planet, yeah. we all connect a little bit differently. Right. And I don't want anybody to feel that they are not connecting because they don't have the same sign as somebody else. Right. They all and have- the same. Yeah, we all have. Yeah. If you had to take away, if you had to give um, a few takeaways of everything we discussed today, what would be some things you'd like to emphasize that you feel are important? I would say to begin the journey. If you, if they are, um, if they're wanting to know more, if they are interested in connecting with their ancestors to begin to um, to, to go down that, you know, as a genealogist, I, people who didn't expect a emotional ancestral connection were surprised when that's what came through. Yeah. So I would, I, in one sense, I would suggest that 
um, to do that. And obviously tell me our story, genealogy and ancestral healing. I do offer a, a 30 minute free session if people wanted to go and do that. But just even aside from that, going through and looking through if they have a family tree, starting to connect, thinking about the things that have been left from other um, family members or the, if they have a story of their ancestors. And then I would say also, um, as that begins to open up to also on the other side, allow the spiritual side to come in, mm -hmm. um, to understand grief as I, you know, one of the things I help people go through is the grieving process, understanding the mind, body and spirit connection yeah. of grief. And so if there, if someone is grieving, you know, to allow that also um, to open up. So I, I would say just begin to say, I want to open and, and begin to think about opening on the ancestral side mm -hmm. and then begin, as I said earlier, so I, the, the rosary helped me open up mm -hmm. and it was just, I hadn't touched a rosary. I literally used my fingers. Yeah. When I first. So if it is something else, anybody of a different faith, it doesn't have to be, this is not about a religion. Right. It's not about any religion. It's about our own spiritual connection and to choose um, sometimes just holding on to something yeah. can help them begin a spiritual connection. So I would say purpose, purposefully think about wanting to connect right. and setting some time aside to begin to have that conversation. Uh, and it doesn't have to be with a candle, with setting in a, in sitting yeah. in a yoga position, but all of that is good if that's what works for you. Right. So it's, it's beginning to choose your own. And, um, and I would love to, you know, if anyone had a question, I would love to talk with them and share a little bit more because I also not only do the genealogy side, but I do the ancestral healing side and can help people to begin that journey um, as well. Right. And where can people find you? What's your website's name? It is tell me our story, uh, tell me our story .com. And I say to remind people, it is the, uh, the story, the uh, name came from the child asking the parent to tell me our story. How, you know, how did with, how did we all, how did I get here yeah. to become who I am? So it's tell me our story .com. And I, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram and so, uh, but tell me our story. It, and if you go to the website, there is, there's a download to help you get started, a free download to help you get started on looking at your ancestry. And there is um, a free, um, there's a free 30 minute session. And I have a, um, now I have to go and look, one. I, I have a free 10% off that I will share. Um, with you if i can <laughs> let me think. we could always put in the description box also for people okay all right so i will do i will do that let me just quickly look at it i apologize that's okay it's, it's always when <laughs> um, so advisor 10 is is what the code is what the coupon is you, with, so a d v i s o r 10 for 10 percent off on my services which is both and set doing an ancestry and also the grieving the mind body and spirit connection which is opening up to spirit as well oh i love it i love it this has been amazing thank you so much bernadette for coming on the show i i truly love everything that you you know all the information that you have given us today, it just, uh, it resonates so well. And you really touched my heart in so many ways. And mm -hmm. uh, I look forward to hoping that you come on the show again and that we can go deeper into a lot of these to topics that we discussed today. Because yes. I think it's very important to learn how to connect with the spiritual world. I think it's, it's very important to understand how to connect with ourselves. Because mm -hmm. once we understand how to connect with ourselves, I feel like we can connect with the 
spiritual world a lot easier. And then if we are able to open ourselves up to the spiritual world, it's it's such a beautiful world because there, there's so much out there that you don't even realize mm -hmm. that's out there. And yes. there's so many connections that can be made and so much good advice and direction that, that you can be open to if you just open yourself up to the spiritual world. And there's so many ways of doing it. And it, there's, and there's, there's so many benefits to actually doing it. And, you know, I always believe that when, when people pass, we, we, like we talked about previously, you know, our physical being may disintegrate, but the energies always live on and they're always with us. And, and you know, they may, they may go somewhere for a little while and come back, but if you call, they will answer, they'll come back. And, you know, they're always there to protect us, watch over us, give us signs, give us love. It's just that we can't see them the way we did when we were in their present tense of life. But they're always, they're always here. It's just mm -hmm. we have to open ourselves. And, you know, there was when you were talking, I, I remember it was a couple of years back, someone had sent me a book. I wish I could remember the title, but she talked about her son passing away. And she mentioned that she had a better relationship when her son passed than she did in the present because she was a lot closer and he shared so many things with her after he passed and crossed over. And, um, you know, there, there are many stories like that and people like you could help people, you know, connect and really understand those type of, of things that are going on in their lives and connect with the trauma and the grief and understand what's going on in their life and understand how to overcome. Because I think that's a big thing too, is that we could become more spiritually connected when we overcome the trauma and when we mm -hmm. let go of that negativity and that negative energy as well. Absolutely. You couldn't have said it better, Stacey. I'm so grateful for um, the opportunity to come on and share this with you and with your audience and just, you know, open the conversation needs to just keep happening because yes. it is so healing for so many people to know that there's help yes. and to not judge themselves if they feel like they're, they haven't made that connection yet. It's, it doesn't mean you can't. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, thank you so much, Bernadette, for coming on this show. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. I look forward to coming back again sometime. Yes, me too. Have a great day. Thanks, you too.